Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE. Covering Knowledge 15. Brought to you by ServiceNow. Welcome back to Las Vegas, everybody. This is Dave Vellante, we're live here in the Mandalay Bay. This is ServiceNow Knowledge 15. This is theCUBE. The Cube goes out to the events. We extract the signal from the noise. This is our third ServiceNow Knowledge event. Uh, the first one was oh, over at the Aria, and then last year at Moscone, we're here in, uh, in the Mandalay Bay this year. Watching the evolution of ServiceNow and the transformation of organizations, Rob Pickering is here. He's the CIO of AAA, AAA Allied. Rob, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Pleasure, happy to be here. So AAA, everybody knows AAA, right? Yeah. Your car breaks down, you call AAA. You, know? you, you can call us to tow your car, and you can also call us to make your travel arrangements, do insurance. Yeah, you got all kinds of new services going on. I whip out my AAA card all the time when I'm taking the family on vacation. I get these killer discounts. Uh, I went in the office the other day, got some, uh, got some Euro in advance. Yeah, got a good absolutely, rate on them. money. Got to get them in advance, got a good rate on them though. But so, talk about your business. A lot of people don't know these other ancillary businesses, but sure. what's happening in your business generally and specifically how are you guys expanding your reach? Well, uh, AAA Ally Group is one of the federation of AAA clubs. Uh, we're the 12th largest uh, AAA club in the United States. There are about 44 clubs total. Uh, we service the state of Kansas, the eastern half of Connecticut, uh, southwest Ohio, a little bit of Kentucky, a little bit of Indiana, a little bit of West Virginia, so we're pretty spread out. Uh, I personally, from an IT staff standpoint, have folks working in four different states, so we rely on a whole bunch of various tools to keep us connected. The AAA brand that everyone knows is evolving over time. Uh, we're trying to Im improve uh, our reach and our knowledge, and you mentioned discounts. Discounts is one of the things that, that's the only thing I talk about when I'm talking about AAA because it's something that people really don't know a lot about. Well, I only recently started taking advantage of it, and they're substantial. It's they not are. like yeah. a, you know a couple of points. I mean, it's, it's and there's really several hundred. Uh, so the AAA mobile app is the best way of finding those. It'll pinpoint you and tell you who's giving you discounts in the area. So I want to talk about mobile, but um, how long have you been the CIO? At uh, I've been at AAA Alley Group for ten years. Okay, so how have things changed? in the last 10 years. I mean, a lot's changed, right? A lot has we changed. We really didn't have cloud back then. You That's know, true. Mobile wasn't really a factor, and there was no such thing as social media, at least to speak of. So, uh, our IT organization has gone through a bunch of transitions in the 10 years that I've been there. Uh, when I started, uh, folks were answering, everyone in the IT department was answering phone calls. So, we were one giant help desk doing anything anybody asked us to do. Uh, we built a lot of structure around that and started evolving the processes and the tools uh, we went through three different ITSM platforms before we landed on ServiceNow, and we've only been on ServiceNow now for about a year. So three different platforms before ServiceNow. Before what service was, now. What wasn't working? So the first platform we were on, uh, not to be named, didn't have any kind of email integration, didn't have any kind of a customer portal, so it was really a, a weak environment uh, to, to roll out to a dispersed organization like ours. Yes, so we hear this a, a lot, um, whether it's, you, you know, you didn't have you know, some kind of capability, or things weren't integrated, or it just didn't do the stuff that you wanted it to do. So, um, okay, so that was sort of the first, first one, or, or two or three, what, yeah. what happened next? So, uh, we, we then moved to another platform that, that kind of served our needs at the time, solved a few of the initial problems that we had, yeah, but it was not ITIL compliant. And oh, we okay. wanted to move towards a more ITIL compliant environment, we ended up on a, another platform. What was the driver for that, Rob? It was a quality initiative? It's or? really qu quality, process, uh, it, it, anything in IT, the only way to scale it is to make it more efficient. So you, we're never going to have enough people, we're never going to have enough resource, we're never going to have enough money. So we tend to invest in tools, and we use those tools to improve our efficiency. Uh, and so every iteration of the tool improved our efficiency a little bit, and we eventually ended up on one that we think we're going to stick but, with But they while. became disposable, you know, right? Uh, so absolutely, right? So they can be expensive as well if you're not focused on looking at, at what your goals are and having the platform deliver. So, Let's go back to the early days uh, of when you brought in ServiceNow. The, the, the impetus was you wanted to get more out of your ITSM Absolutely. You know, system. So, so take us back to what that was like. What did you have to do to bring it in? Was it, was it politically charged? Did your CFO want to like, get you in a stranglehold? It's funny, I worked for the CFO. <laughs> uh, 
we, we actually initially implemented ServiceNow because we wanted a project management tool. Uh, we were in the market for a new project management portfolio management tool. Uh, we evaluated a bunch of them and we very quickly figured out that we were going to have people working in two different systems. There was going to be one group in the project tool, uh, there was going to be that same group working in the ITSM platform, and we wouldn't have any single record of all of their work, all their efforts, their resources, no common process logic, et cetera. So we started looking at ServiceNow, and we actually ended up purchasing the platform specifically to roll out project. Okay, so that's interesting. We were talking earlier to one of our guests about you know, project. It's obviously a place where people start. Um, not necessarily always the starting point, but a reasonable one. You know, small guys like us, we might use Basecamp, but you're you're managing a lot more you know com complex projects. Okay, so you you brought in project, and then what happened next? So after we brought in project, we knew when we made the decision that we were going to be ousting our prior ITSM platform. That was the whole reason why we did ServiceNow. Uh, so once we rolled out project, we actually had it live in January of 2014. Uh, and then we began our ITSM implementation uh, near the end of February, beginning of March, and we went live on the ITSM platform 90 days later and rolled out incident problem change, service catalog, CMS. So and, it was and using a single CMDB? Using a single CMDB for everything, one tool for everyone working on projects, working on the ITSM platform. Okay, so what happened? What was the business result? The business results uh, have been astounding, frankly. Uh, astounding? Astounding. We. We didn't anticipate what would happen, and that was that as we were improving our processes, we all became evangelists inside the organization. So the whole IT team loved the platform, they loved the tool, they loved the visibility, how it worked. Uh, it was kind of like finding a, a nirvana at, at some level. And then they started talking about it to all of their customers, the people that they're talking to on the phone, the tickets they're working, about what it was doing for our group and those same business organizations started saying, well, how, how could we take advantage of that? Is that something that we can do? Can you put us in that platform? How can we use it? And we immediately said, well, that's exactly what we want to do. So like what kind of groups, like HR? Or? HR, accounting, uh, our facilities organization, we call them office services, uh, our ERS business operations group, uh, they're the, the actual kind of mini IT organization that supports all the road service operations, uh, several others. Marketing uh, is another one as well. So any sort of request oriented Any request approver type of, request approver fulfiller type flow. Uh, and in many cases, it's replacing things that we had put in place as stop gaps for those organizations like a, a SharePoint list or a SharePoint workflow, something small that they, they had us create in the past. Spreadsheets. Spreadsheets that weren't working email. well. The big one's email, right? Got all of the other business organizations, uh, they've never, they never got to mature from a process standpoint the way IT did. If you think about IT, in the past, we started on the phone, then we moved to some sort of a ticketing system that wasn't connected to anything, then we moved to a ticketing system connected to email, and then eventually we had a customer portal where you could put stuff in, and we went through this maturity cycle. The other business lines went straight from uh, walk over to their desk or pick up a phone to email. And once they hit email, they stayed there. And all of their request, approver, fulfiller stuff was happening in email. And that's essentially how we sell the tool internally. Do you have stuff that you're using email for? If you do, that's a broken process. Let us help you fix it. So how has it affected <laughs> the flow of emails in your organization. Uh, the hope is it's reducing them significantly and we're, we're seeing that over time as people move, it's a cultural shift. Every, everybody loves email, so as people move from their email process to an automated process or a ServiceNow request fulfiller process, suddenly they aren't relying on email. Email's not where their work is. Their work is in the system, the tool. So did you? So you must have seen a, a, a behavioral shift. I mean, most workers, when they come in in the morning, the first thing they do is fire up their email. Yeah. Um, and is is that still the case, or are they firing up service now? If they're in IT, they're firing up service really? now. Absolutely. That is the. You walk around our office uh, and work with any of our folks. That's the screen they have up. They have their service now screen up, and we're slowly seeing that happen in the other business lines as well. That we've moved. Now, we haven't moved them all, uh, and we're continuing to work on moving more and more of them into the, the tool itself, but 
it's successful. I was struck by Frank's keynote this morning when he wanted an iPhone 6. Did you see that? That's exactly it. And he got, he, his, he <laughs> emailed the CIO, the, email, the CIO emailed back a link. The link to the portal, and that's what we do as and well. And that's what you would have done. That's exactly this what we This is where you done. get the service. Leave me this alone, is, this I'm is, busy. This is where you can do it, this is how you interact. <laughs> and what's more important is if anybody working in a, a larger organization knows that one of the challenges is figuring out where do I go to request whatever it is? Do I go to our intranet? Do I go to our customer portal? Do I email someone? Do I call someone? How do I find it? And now those answers are always go to the customer portal, which is our ServiceNow CMS. So the customer's portal is the ServiceNow uh, is a front end to virtually all the services Everything. within your organization, is the vision anyway. Yep. So if I want to make do something in HR, like I know in our situation, we have to go to two or three or four different portals you know, right. to find out, or I have to go to my health, sometimes I have to go directly to my healthcare provider, or I, I don't know, I don't know where to go. And over time, yeah. we're moving everything into that one customer portal, so that you, you, can, you can communicate with your employees and say, hey, this is how you interact with our organization, whether it's a personal request, I need to change my W-2 form, uh, or I want to sign up for a health club, or I need some sort of an HR form, or it's a business request hey, I need to update that graphical sign at that office. That's a lot of stuff though, so how do I find it? Is it a, is it a search paradigm? It's a dynamic it... search. So in our portal, you plug in a search criteria and you'll get two, re two search results. The left-hand side will be all the knowledge base articles that we've created around that topic, and on the right-hand side, it's all the service catalog entries. How, how does a service get spun up? Do you worry at all about the analog to, to VM sprawl, the service sure. sprawl? How do you manage all that? Um, we manage it a couple of ways. Uh, we've got a request process uh, that utilizes ServiceNow's demand management to evaluate whether or not it's something that should be put out on the portal, sort of a, a curation uh, process. We also enable our business lines directly. So we use ServiceNow's service creator uh, application to create full-blown applications that we then deliver to our business lines and it allows them to manage all of those request forms themselves. They can create them, they can publish them, they can edit them, they can modify them, and they don't have to uh, work with IT to do any of that. What are the curation parameters that you use? Uh, some of the curation parameters in demand are uh, the capital cost, the labor cost, the risk, the return on investment, et cetera. So you run a business case. So we, you're essentially doing many business cases on every request that's coming in, but you've streamlined that process through demand management to, to deliver a, an artifact at the end, whether it be a project or a new development story uh, or another request form. And, and Service Creator is App Creator, those are one and the same? Or I think they're, yeah. those, are, those okay. are two different products. App Creator is for full-blown kind of create now applications and service creator is for, new services. is for onboarding a new service specifically for a business line to manage. Are you at the point where you're considering app creator? Absolutely, uh, and so we have, we're evaluating the different, each, each tool's got a, a use case, and so as business lines want to onboard, we evaluate their technical expertise, how much they want to invest from a licensing standpoint, uh, and then determine what the best uh, use case is for them, whether it's service creator or a Create Now app or even a, a, a commercial ServiceNow application that we can purchase. I remember um, when we first heard about App Creator, Jeff Frick and I were doing the Cube, and we were saying, that's PaaS. Yeah. And at first, people were saying, well, man, not really, but it is. It really is, you know. Right? I mean, it's sort of headlong into that platform as a service, but, but it requires different skill sets, or it, it, it minimizes the skill sets that are required. So how, if at all, are you changing your development skill set profile. So one of the one of the issues that we had with our former ITSM platform was that we created a bottleneck and that bottleneck was in our ability to execute the development process. So as our internal folks needed changes to the to the applications, that would come into one of two developers and they very quickly got overwhelmed. So when we implemented ServiceNow, we took a different approach. I had 10 of my 32 IT staff admin trained in the ServiceNow platform, and then we took those 10 folks and made them responsible for various aspects of the system, and from that came six certified administrators that they did on their own uh, that make up a development group, and we actually use ServiceNow's SDLC Scrum tool to manage our ServiceNow development going forward. 
Interesting. And so, how does the ServiceNow app creator mm -hmm. sort of roadmap fit into whatever it is, whatever you're developing in, Ruby, Java, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's, Python? Yeah, ultimately it simplifies it because uh, the development platform becomes ServiceNow. So you're not doing Ruby, you're not doing Python or Perl or PHP or any of that. Uh, they need a JavaScript skill set and they can start developing apps in ServiceNow. The app creator minimizes uh, the time, really, to turn up those applications because you've got templates built for small, medium, and large applications that have different feature sets. So it, again, it's an evaluation for what folks need. Does it take pressure off? I mean, everybody complains about the, you know, it's how hard it is to find good developers. Uh, it, does it change that equation? Yeah, I, it's, it's made folks in our organization that I would not have initially thought we're going to take to developing, developing and being developers and turn them into ServiceNow developers. So what's the skill set you now look for? So you, you know, you're obviously looking at somebody's resume, all right, whatever, let's say you're de developing in Perl or sure. you know, whatever, Java, okay, that's what I need. What do you look for now? A, a desire to, to be able to create is, is literally the, the best. If they're passionate about it, they've got a desire to learn it and understand it, uh, we can start them on stuff that doesn't require any coding, kind of our our zero coders, no coders that Frank talked about this morning, uh, and then move them through that process until they're all the way in the lower left corner as you know core system developers in JavaScript. Okay, so that is your your goal is to get them to the point where if that's everybody what they want to do. Can, yeah, okay, yeah. so it's really up to them. It's up to them, and they can stop along that that path wherever they want. And, and there's always something that they're going to be able to do to contribute. When you think about the portfolio of skill sets, do you try to have a mix, a diversified portfolio, sure. or are you try, trying to? Yeah, yeah absolutely, see. because everybody's going to have a different interest level as well. How about mobile, Rob? Um, it's the rage. You guys got a mobile app. Mm -hmm. um, what are you guys doing in the whole mobile space? And so we're service now yeah, we're we're a little bit young in the the mobile space in our implementation. Uh, ServiceNow Im implements automatically on tablets, so everything that we're doing uh, is available on a tablet interface. To move it to a smartphone interface requires a little bit of effort, and we're starting to undergo some of that efforts because those same business lines, some of the advantages they see is all their folks have a smartphone and they want to be able to check their incidents, you know, respond to them, deal with approvals, et cetera, on a mobile app. How about gotchas, things that you would maybe do differently uh, now, knowing what you know, maybe advice that you give to some of your, your peers in terms of if you're thinking about bringing in service now, do A, B, and C, and D, this is what I would have done differently if I had to do it all over again. If I was going to do it all over again, you know, I'd like to say I would have done it sooner uh, because <laughs> I'd love to go back in don't time. Don't go through and, first, yeah, second, and third iterations. Don't go through all the different ITSM iterations tools that, we did. that you throw out. Yeah, okay. um, but beyond that, you know, I, I was really happy with the way that we kind of built the development environment. Uh, we did not focus on you know full-time developers. We focused on people with a desire to develop and spread that effort out among a large group of people. That's, that's enabled us to move forward very quickly. Uh, something that I'd probably do different, uh, I, I would probably bite off less at once. We, we bit off a bunch of the platform over a, a six month time frame and implemented, uh, which today would be the whole PPM suite, the whole ITSA suite, uh, performance analytics, event management, demand management, just an enormous effort and that was a lot. So I would, I would tell anybody who's looking at the platform today, if you have an ITSM platform, look at Express, right? I was real impressed with what they talked about on Express, especially the fact that the, the path from Express to a full-blown service now is clicking a button. So that, that was impressive, that was not something I knew about, so I would say look at that. And then number two, start small. Uh, find something that is going to solve a problem, one application module, whatever it is, implement it, get it working, and then figure out what your next step is. Did you bake a cake? We didn't get a launch <laughs> cake. We did not get a go live cake. I, I saw all those cakes on the keynote, and uh, the guy sitting next to me, one of my folks was like, hey, we didn't get a go live cake, so <laughs> that's all right. We, we did our own celebration. Uh, that's awesome. Rob, thanks very much. We've got to leave it there. I really appreciate you coming on theCUBE. It was a pleasure. pleasure talking to you. Thanks very much. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. This is theCUBE. We're live from ServiceNow Knowledge. Hashtag No14. Go to the CrowdChat, crowdchat.net slash No14. No, sorry, No15. What am I talking about? <laughs> it's 2015, folks. All right, everything I said, Global Replace 15. We'll be right back. This is theCUBE. <laughs>